It's done. What is? The turkey. Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Happy Who Like Week. Hopefully you've all had a chance to see the Doctor Who Christmas special now. Since there are so many references going all the way back to William Hartnell's era, I thought it'd be fun to try and find everything, just like I did during the 50th anniversary episode. I'll also be doing a Peter Capaldi Series 8 predictions video, as well as a bunch more Sherlock videos before the Series 3 premiere on January 1st. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. Heads up too, I'm giving another $20 gift certificate away to a random subscriber in the comments. So let's get started. This one's gonna be a whopper. Number one, quick and dirty. At 60 minutes, the episode is the shortest episode ever broadcast on BBC One featuring a regeneration. Technically, the Night of the Doctor mini episode only aired on the Red Service and the web. In contrast, David Tennant's final regeneration in the end of time was 2 hours and 15 minutes long. 2. The Narrator Tasha Lem narrates the beginning of the episode. This is the second episode to feature a narrator at the beginning. The other time was Rassilon during the end of time. 3. All Who Came All of the spaceships you see in the wide shot above Trenzalore include the Daleks, the Cybermen, the Jadoon, the Suntarans, the Silurians, the Terraleptals, the Slatheen family, and the Church of the Papal Mainframe. Although technically, they're an organization, not a species. The configuration of their ships is a visual callback to the enemy alliance during Pandorica. 4. Not pictured. The Weeping Angels, the Monoid, and the Rachnos. The Weeping Angels were also on Trenzalor, but they often travel on other people's spaceships. It's not fully explained how they landed on the planet, as Tasha Lem said that they created a force field to prevent anyone from orbit from entering the atmosphere. The Monoid isn't seen on screen, but is depicted as a puppet. The Ragnos was also only seen on screen in one of the children's drawings on the wall of the clock tower. It's implied that they arrived and were defeated sometime during the long siege of Trenzalore in the war. 5. The Invernus Cape Matt Smith is wearing an Invernus Cape similar to the one worn by the Third Doctor. Originally, John Pertwee chose it as a joke and wore it to a production meeting, but it stuck. The Third Doctor stole the Invernus Cape during his debut episode, Spearhead from Space. 6. Handles The reprogrammed Cyberman head the Doctor is calling Handles is a visual reference to K-9 from the Fourth Doctor's run and the Sarah Jane adventures. He even utters K-9's signature phrase, affirmative. 7. The Phone this is the third time Matt Smith has used the physical phone outside the TARDIS, despite the Ninth Doctor claiming that it's not a real phone during Empty Child. It's revealed that the Doctor never uses it because it's typically patched through the TARDIS console. 8. Inventing a Boyfriend The Doctor tells Clara that he had an android boyfriend once. He is referring to Chameleon, who was a companion of the Fifth Doctor. He was last seen in a picture on the unit wall inside the Black Archives during the 50th anniversary special. 9. Upgrades the Cybermen in the episode are the alternate universe Cybus versions, later confirmed in another drawing on the wall of the clock tower which features the phrase, delete. 10. Clara's Mother The actress playing her starred previously in the Sontaran Stratagem and during the Sarah Jane Adventures. 11. Clara's Grandmother The actress playing Clara's grandmother previously starred in Vengeance on Varos during the Sixth Doctor's run. 12. The Apartment Complex the apartment complex Clara's family lives in is extremely similar to the one used in the Ninth Doctor's first episode, Rose. Interestingly enough, the Doctor was carrying around a hand for a large portion of that episode, just like Matt Smith carries around handles. 13. The Doctor is Naked Matt Smith also appeared stark naked in front of Amy Pond during the 11th hour while he chose his new outfit. 14. Holographic Clothes The Doctor and Clara go to the Papal Mainframe naked and are still naked when they land on the planet, in a snowstorm. Coldest game of Twister ever. 15. The Turkey They cook the turkey by exposing it to the time vortex over the course of the episode. Baking the turkey is also a metaphor for the arrival of Peter Capaldi. He's baking inside Matt Smith for most of the episode. 16. The Papal Mainframe The mainframe is just the spaceship headquarters of the church, run by Tasha Lem. You can think of it as a highly advanced version of the Church of England. 17. Tasha Lem The actress playing her, Orla Brady, mentioned during an interview that her character and the Doctor had a romantic relationship at one point and that Tasha was a bit cruel, but the Doctor enjoyed it so much, he always forgave her. There's also theories that she's actually a version of River Song. The strongest piece of evidence is that she is able to decode the message from Gallifrey before the Doctor, and he was only able to decode it after using the Seal of the High Council. There's also the fact that the Daleks said that they killed her several times, and unless they revived her, that would only be possible if she could regenerate. 
18. The Silence It's revealed that the Silence are actually a genetically engineered order of priests. Their memory wiping abilities are merely to prevent you from feeling guilty after confessing your sins to them. The Silence trying to kill the Doctor during Series 6 were a rogue sect called the Kovarians, named for Madame Kovarian. They were the ones that blew up the TARDIS, creating a bootstrap paradox, which the Doctor calls the Destiny Trap. The Silence went back in time to prevent the Doctor from answering the question by blowing up the TARDIS, but in doing so, created the very cracks in the universe that allowed the Time Lords to eventually ask the question. You can't change history if you're already part of it. 19. The Wig The Doctor got bored and shaved his head. In real life, Matt Smith filmed the movie before they filmed the special. During that time, he shaved his head, so whenever filming started on the Christmas special, he was forced to wear a wig. Karen Gillan, who appeared in the episode for a brief cameo, also had to wear a wig because she had also shaved her head for another movie, Guardians of the Galaxy. In more distant Doctor Who history, Paul McGann had to wear a wig when he played the 8th Doctor during the TV movie, 20. Your ears are like rocket fins. Clara makes fun of the Doctor's ears, a nice visual callback to the ninth Doctor's ears. During his first episode, Rose, he looks into a mirror and says, Could have been worse. Look at the ears. 21. The Truth Field We find out that the Time Lords are projecting the Truth Field through the crack in the clock tower along with the message. We also learn that Clara really does fancy the Doctor. However, we've always known the Doctor was a thief. Also note that the townspeople ask the Doctor his name, but he covers his mouth to keep from saying it. This is just a joke, as he doesn't know that speaking his name is what the message is all about. 22. The Doctor's Outfit The Doctor changes into his outfit from the 2012 Christmas special, The Snowman, and wears it for the remainder of the episode until he regenerates, changing back into his Series 7 outfit and then becoming Peter Capaldi. 23. The Crack the Doctor finds that the message is coming from the same type of crack seen all the way back in the 11th hour. We also learn what the Doctor saw during the God Complex in room number 11. At the time, he didn't know that it was the Time Lords who were the ones poking holes in the universe. He was merely afraid of the weakness in the fabric of the universe. 24. The Seal of the High Council The Doctor would have actually stolen it during the events of the Five Doctors when the Master was sent to rescue the Doctors from the Death Zone. During that period, he said that he would return the Seal upon his earliest convenience. 25. The First Question The reason it's called the First Question is because it's being projected across all of time and space, meaning that it's playing at the birth of the universe, or the rebirth, depending on the events of the Big Bang. 26. Doctor Who The voice speaking the question is the general of the Council of Time Lords seen during the 50th anniversary. 27. What's this planet called? Trenzalore was the gravesite of the Doctor in the Series 7 finale. During that original timeline, the Doctor never uttered his name and did not receive the new cycle of regenerations, which is why we saw his corpse. We can assume that the final resting place of the Doctor might still end up being Trenzalore, but only based on something else that might happen in the future. 28. The Doctor Who Stayed for Christmas The Doctor stays on Trenzalore to keep the Alliance from destroying the planet and everyone on it. He's staying more to help the people rather than the Time Lords. The Time Lords were never in any real danger. 29. The Siege of Trenzalore For the first 300 years of the Siege, the Church and the Doctor upheld the truce by keeping out all technology, not including the Sonic. Thus the wooden Cyberman, which is actually played by a woman. During the standoff, he uses the classic third Doctor phrase, reverse the polarity. And 30, he also mentions that the Sonic still does not work on wood, which he previously talked about during the 2011 Christmas special, The Doctor, The Widow, and The Wardrobe, and during Silence in the Library. 31, the cane. He starts using a cane similar to that used by William Hartnell's Doctor. He even pokes the monoid puppet with it, a monster last seen during Hartnell's run. 32, the dance. The Doctor teaches the children the drunk giraffe, as seen during the wedding of Amy Pond in Big Bang. 33. Clara rides outside the TARDIS, just like Captain Jack Harkness in Utopia during Series 3, and the Doctor himself during Hyde in Series 7. 34. Reconnect the phone. Before Handles runs out of power, he reminds the Doctor to fix the phone. Picking up the phone is a metaphor throughout the episode, from the Time Lords wanting the Doctor to answer their call and help them bring Gallifrey back, to Tasha Lem trying to call the Doctor when the Daleks invaded the Papal mainframe. 35. Everything ends. Everyone's question about which number of Doctor Smith is and how many regens he's used is answered. He tells Clara he's the 13th version of himself in the 11th Doctor's body, all thanks to Captain Grumpy and a vain number 10 doubling down. 36. The Boy Who Waited. Barnable asks the Doctor if he's coming back and says he'll wait. The Doctor smiles, remembering little Amelia Pond during the 11th hour. 37. Where are the pink ones? 
It's unclear whether or not the doctor is eating jelly babies or some other type of candy, as the only other food that number 11 would crave would be fish fingers and custard, which he eats before finishing his regeneration. 38. Human form Daleks the Daleks claim that they killed her several times, meaning they either resuscitated her or she regenerated, having Time Lord-like abilities. 39. The First Doctor When Clara returns for the final time, the Doctor appears extremely old. I've seen estimates anywhere from 600 to 900 years older than he was at the start of the episode. His hair resembles that of the First Doctor, William Hartnell. 40. Extract from Thoughts on a Clock The poem that Clara reads is by Eric Ritchie Jr., a character made up as part of the story. It's unknown whether Stephen Moffat or Mark Gatiss wrote the poem. 41. The Name of the Doctor Clara tells the Time Lords the same speech that the Doctor gave her during the Series 7 finale, convincing them to help the Doctor. They do so by granting the Doctor a new regeneration cycle of 12. 42. Up in the Sky So they could have totally sent the regeneration energy through that original crack inside the clock tower, but for dramatic effect, the production team moved the crack to the sky. 43. Never Tell Me the Rules this is just Moffat poking fun at the fandom for obsessing over the rule of 12 for the past six months. He's just winking at us from behind the camera. Notice the glowy hands. Smith's regeneration actually started the minute his body took in the new cycle of 12, meaning he's using his first of that new 12 to become a Capaldi. Start the counter. We have 11 regens left. 44. It's gonna be a whopper. The Doctor is regenerating for the 13th time, which is extremely unusual. As a consequence, he's giving off more energy during the process. It's likely that when Capaldi eventually regenerates, he'll give off even more energy. 45. Taking a bit longer. In the final moments that we see him, he's just an echo of 11 and the first whisper of 12. Just enough time to have some fish fingers and custard and think about an old friend. 46. Goodbye, raggedy man. The doctor remembers Amelia Pond across her lifetime, as she was a child when they first met and then later as an adult. It's not a bad wolf situation. He's just seeing her in his memory. It's been six years, so the actress playing young Amelia is different, but Karen Gillan returned to film the scene. As mentioned earlier, she and Smith were both very bald in this scene and wearing wigs. 47. Bow ties will always be cool. Smith dropping the bow tie is the bookend to his run on Doctor Who. The bow tie belonged to his character, just like the scarf belonged to Tom Baker. Don't be surprised if Peter Capaldi does not wear any kind of neckwear. 48. I've got new kidneys. Peter Capaldi's doctor upholds the tradition that all new doctors always fixate on their physical features first. 49. Do you happen to know how to fly this thing? New doctors are typically disoriented after regenerating. The eighth doctor didn't even know who he was. 50. The final frame. Clara's reaction shot ending is the first regeneration to end on a character that is not the doctor. There were so many parts of the episode that incorporated things from Classic Who. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you saw anything that I didn't mention in my video. This was super long, so you are a champ if you made it to the end. Don't forget, I am giving away a $20 Amazon gift card to a random subscriber in the comments. Right now, you can click here to get my Christmas special Q&A, and you can click here to get my review. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.